Coming up on UCF Nightly News. Students are worried after a number of crimes in nearby apartment complexes the past two weeks. How UCF police say you can protect yourself. It's been a year since UCF its campus to downtown. Coming up, we'll tell you about the progress UCF is making. And some new artwork is coming to a busy intersection downtown, but it may cause some people to do a double take. You're watching Nightly News covering the university community and the greater Orlando area. Nightly News starts now. Good afternoon and welcome to Nightly News. I'm Natalie Cavieses. And I'm Jessica Gottsleben. Today is Friday, February 6th. Hundreds of people in downtown Orlando are without a home each day. And a new sculpture will show this in a unique way. Nightly News reporter Melissa Murray shows us where the sculpture will be and what people are saying about it. This sidewalk may seem bare now, but in a few months, something new will be added. But this isn't your average park bench. Something's different about it, and it has people talking. First Presbyterian Church of Orlando is preparing to welcome some new artwork. It comes from a Canadian artist and a $40,000 price tag. When I saw the sculpture, it's, it's very arresting. Uh, you at first think it's a homeless person, you can't really see the face, but then you see the scars on the feet and you realize, well, this is Jesus. This sculpture is named Homeless Jesus, and much of the city's homeless population is just blocks away from where the artwork will go. Dr. Swanson says he knows the sculpture is creating conversation, but he wants people to ask the question, what am I doing to help the homeless? This sculpture will impact people, I believe, to think about their charity, to think about their giving, to think about how they treat people that will far exceed a $40,000 price tag. So I think sometimes when people say that, they're being short-sighted about the overall impact of what art brings to a community. City ordinances make it illegal for anyone to sleep on a bench. But a representative for Orlando Homeless Services says he sees the sculpture as a metaphor. Backlash in and of itself is, is conversation. And uh, I don't think that uh, there was any ill will intended. I do think that in the Christian faith there is the element that Jesus was a person who had no place to lay his head. And in our terms today, we would call him homeless. Private donations covered the cost of the sculpture. It's set to be installed in June. In Orlando, Melissa Murray, UCF Nightly News. Last April, Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer said he plans to house 300 homeless people over the next three years. City leaders say they're still working to find locations for the housing. And UCF is making strides in its expansion plan for downtown Orlando. Last week, the university's Board of Trustees unanimously approved the UCF downtown proposal. This proposal includes details like funding, time frame, and which programs UCF will relocate to the downtown campus. Project Representative Christine Dellert says the university can build off of its existing strengths. So we're looking at programs that would uh, complement what's already there and really programs that we feel fit into and will help to catapult the region's emerging digital media, the technology hub that's down in Orlando. UCF representatives will meet with the Board of Governors in Tallahassee on February 19th in hopes of getting further approval for funding. Yesterday, UCF police made a stalking arrest right outside of Nightly News headquarters. Officers arrested 29-year-old Daniel Tucker Kendrick outside of the Nicholson School of Communication. Police responded to the scene after reports of Kendrick making disturbing comments to a female student. UCF officials confirmed that both parties involved are students. Communications major Patrick Yunkins told Nightly News he witnessed Kendrick's arrest. And we just kind of noticed the, um, the gentleman walking out with the two police officers. We weren't exactly sure what was going on, but then like I said, SUVs started pulling up that were unmarked. And then they were kind of walked him over to the cruiser, took everything out of his pockets, um, put handcuffs on him, and again said, you're not under arrest, but we are going to put you in handcuffs. UCF officials say there were no injuries reported and Kendrick was cooperative with police during his arrest. Official government public records show that Kendrick is currently booked in the Orange County Jail. 
Some UCF students living off campus will be keeping an extra eye on their personal items now. In the past two weeks, there's been at least four burglaries in apartment complexes close to campus. Nightly News reporter Jasmine Hankerson tells us about student concerns and how police say students can protect themselves. Jasmine, tell us what you found. Well, students living in dorm rooms like Lake Claire may be feeling a little bit safer than off-campus residents right now. These police reports show that at least five burglaries happened in off-campus housing in the past two weeks. And now some UCF students say they're concerned. Kelly Bourne is one of eight Northgate Lake residents who woke up last Monday morning with something missing. Between midnight and 8 a.m., burglars took more than $5,000 worth of belongings that they'll likely never see again. Bourne says she feels unsafe in her home and never thought she would be a victim. It just makes you think about what you could have done differently. And I mean, we, we knew coming in here that there was minimal security and, you know, I it guess it's just one of those things you don't think about, you know, I'm not going to get robbed. At the Village at Alafaya Club near UCF, two residents were almost victims of a burglary last Tuesday. The suspects burst into the victim's apartment that afternoon, but when they saw the victim's gun, they ran off. UCF freshman Justice Thomas lives in the building right across from those victims. She says the lack of security concerns her for the future. It's so easy to get in here. Like, literally anyone can come in, they can walk in, you don't need to be a resident. No one would know. Everyone looks the same, so it's really just breathtaking that something like this happened. Thomas is up for a lease renewal, but she and other students may not stay. Even gated complexes haven't kept these types of crimes away. Last semester, there were at least two robberies and a burglary at the Marquee, formerly known as Sterling at Central. UCF police officer Peter Stevens says no matter where students move, they need to make sure they're always aware of what's going on. Students are often a little naive when it comes to crime, so we want them to be prepared. Always be thinking, can I be a victim? Now, Officer Stevens also says to make sure your doors and windows are always locked, even if you're still home. And as for Bourne, she says she plans to move to a home next year where she has more control over security. Reporting live in front of Lake Claire, Jasmine Hankerson, UCF Nightly News. Thanks, Jasmine. UCF's property registration program is free for students to register their belongings in case they belong victims of a crime. For more information on how you can sign up, visit nightlynews.ucf.edu. And an update on Monday's domestic violence incident on campus. Police say last night they arrested the man accused of throwing a woman from a car. 30-year-old Jose David Rodriguez pushed his girlfriend out of his mother's SUV on Gemini and Orion Boulevards following an argument. Officers arrested Rodriguez in Palm Beach County last night from his uncle's house while responding to a call for a suicidal man. Rodriguez is facing felony battery charges, among other minor offenses. Visit nightlynews.ucf.edu for more information. February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, but how does this impact college students at UCF? A Center for Disease Control and Prevention survey shows one in 10 teens reported violence from their partner in the last year. UCF Victim Services will host events this month to address violence in relationships. The Victim Services Office also offers resources to become aware of red flags and where to go for help. The Director of Victim Services says incoming UCF students are also required to complete the Not Anymore module to learn about healthy relationships. So we want to make sure that everybody understands that an abusive relationship is not normal, that you can change yourself, but you cannot force somebody else to change, and to identify those situations so that they can get out of it early enough so that we don't see our clients in the emergency room or at the hospital or our students in general. For more information on the resources UCF offers, visit our website. And you know, looking ahead at the calendar, it looks like there's a, it's going to be a pretty busy weekend this weekend, don't you think? Yeah, and it's been pretty cold outside. How's it looking for outside activities? Well, guys, it's looking absolutely beautiful outside today. Right now, it's about 65 degrees outside with a 0% chance of rain. But it is Florida, so of course we have some humidity at 43% and a northeast wind at 17 miles per hour. Thanks, Allison. Still ahead on Nightly News. Many people start off their morning with at least one cup of joe. Find out what a new study shows about the possible health benefits of drinking coffee. And a deadly virus is traveling across the U.S. Find out what that virus is next.
This week, the Department of Health and Human Services announced that the number of Floridians enrolled for Obamacare reached more than 1.3 million people. This number is the largest of any state participating in the federal health care exchange, and among the five Florida areas included in the release, the Orlando, Kissimmee, and Sanford area had the second largest percentage of enrollees. The measles virus is making a strong comeback and 14 states already report cases of it. Nightly News reporter Tom Abel shows us what health professionals have to say about the outbreak and what can be done to contain it. The Center for Disease Control says that as of January 30th, 102 people from 14 states were reported to have the measles virus. The current outbreak in the U.S. is due in part to an outbreak that started at Disneyland in California. But the Florida Department of Health says that four cases of the measles made their way through Florida over the past two weeks. UCF Director of Biomedical Sciences Dr. Griff Parks stresses just how serious the virus can be. Measles virus is so contagious. It's, it's, it's probably the most contagious organism we know of. Dr. Parks also says that the measles isn't your average head cold or sore throat. In very severe cases, the measles virus infection can spread to the central nervous system, spread to the brain, and cause brain swelling and ultimately death. While Dr. Parks says the vaccine is your best defense against the virus, some are still wary about it. Father of four, Ozzy Vaca, says personal experiences and experiences of others make him think twice. I've uh, felt that in the recent years uh, with uh, families that I know, who uh, there have been a few kids who have either contracted cancer or have become autistic, had some sort of health problems later on down the road, and uh, I just feel it might have been due to the... Um, vaccinations themselves. Dr. Park says while nothing is for certain, people should weigh their options. Uh, are vaccines perfect? No. Do they give you a benefit that w outweighs the, the small chance of side effects? Absolutely. In Orlando, Tom Ebel, UCF Nightly News. The most recent outbreak occurred Thursday in the Chicago area. Illinois health officials say five children under the age of one caught the virus at Kinder Care Learning Center. Florida health officials urge residents to get the vaccine to prevent spread. And the FDA granted approval to a new breast cancer treatment on Tuesday. Ibrance, a medicine from the Pfizer pharmaceutical company, blocks molecules linked to cancer cell growth. It is meant to treat postmenopausal women with advanced breast cancer who have not taken other drugs. Do you think you drink too much coffee? Well, don't worry, because that might not be a bad thing. A new study from the National Cancer Institute shows that drinking four or more cups of caffeinated coffee a day lowers your risk for melanoma by 20%. SkinCancer.org reports that melanoma is the fifth most common cancer in the U.S. But with all of the coffee selections on campus, students shouldn't have much of a problem. One UCF student says she knew getting a Starbucks gold card would pay off because I do have a slight caffeine addiction where I do enjoy a cup of coffee or two or three, depending on the day. So for me, that'd be awesome since melanoma runs in my family and I have to go get um, mole checks and things like that just to make sure that I don't have it. Despite this study, medical experts at UCF say you should just use more sunscreen instead of increasing your coffee intake. And while drinking coffee may be good for your health, watching TV may not be. A new University of Texas at Austin study suggests that binge watching is linked to depression and loneliness. So lots of tuning in can mean you're tuning out, your reality. The study reveals that those who feel more depressed watch more programs on TV for longer periods of time. They also express negative feelings and the need for more distractions. Dr. Patricia Bach, UCF Psychology Clinic Director, says TV viewing has long been associated with depression. Despite the new study, she says the results aren't enough to add to the little that is known about binge watching, and some students say that this study's findings are a bit of a stretch. Yes, there's time where I'm stressed out that I like to watch TV, but there's other times when I'm perfectly fine and I just like want to have a lazy day and just want to see what's on Netflix and how I'm going to have a Netflix day. For tips on how to avoid binge watching, visit nightlynews.ucf.edu. The third largest power company in the United States is planning on bringing more solar power to Florida. Florida Power and Light officials announced last week they will nearly double the amount of solar electricity by next year. Nightly News reporter Charles Babier finds out what this means for Florida's future. Florida has long been called the Sunshine State, but the name doesn't always live up to expectations. 
The Solar Energy Industries Association says that in 2013, Florida ranked 18th in the country for solar production, despite having the third highest potential in terms of available sunlight. But dropping solar cost, combined with the availability of land, mean that solar power is cheaper than ever. The director of the Florida Solar Energy Center, Dr. James Fenton, says this is good news for Florida jobs. We spend money on fossil fuels. A lot of that money leaves the state because it didn't come from here. It wasn't made in Florida. So we could have done a lot of useful things with that money if we keep it here in, home, in Florida. Solar energy, the panels could be made here in Florida. Dr. Fenton also expects more utility companies to follow Florida Power & Light's lead. Economic. John Del Mar put solar panels on his roof two years ago and says they have lived up to the hype. The system is generating about two-thirds of my total annual electricity use. So if I were paying $100 a month before the solar, I'm now paying roughly $30 to $40 a month. As the cost of solar continues to drop, Dr. Fenton expects more consumers to install solar panels on their own roofs. Reporting in Orlando, Charles Baber, UCF Nightly News. Florida, Power, Florida Power and Light's new plants will be located in the DeSoto, Charlotte, and Manatee counties. The company currently operates a solar plant near the Kennedy Space Center in addition to 22 other facilities across the state. And now let's take a look at some headlines from around the country. Kelsey? Yes, Natalie. Devastating news from up north. A shooting at the University of South Carolina left one professor dead and the gunman as well. The image from the University of Central Florida's web, or from South Carolina's website, Professor Raja Fayed was shot and killed at the Arnold School of Public Health. Campus police responded to the scene yesterday around 1 p.m. Police have not released the name of the shooter. Nightly News will keep you updated on new information. And President Obama says his 2016 budget is designed to strengthen our middle class and help Americans' hardworking families get ahead. White House officials say this budget me makes critical investments to the promote growth in areas of research, education, training, and more. The budget aims to reduce the deficit about $1.8 trillion. This is primarily through budget reforms in health programs, tax code, and immigration. And in international news, the Taiwanese flight that crashed into a Taiwan River on Wednesday has left at least 32 people dead. Officials say 11 people are still missing. The plane carrying 58 passengers turned on its side shortly after takeoff. It hit a bridge and landed in the river of Taiwan's capital in Taipei. 15 people were rescued with injuries. That's all we have for now. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Kelsey. Still ahead on Nightly News. Learn how students are breaking their ideas into the marketplace. And hear how a clinic at UCF is helping veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan with PTSD.
Author Jennifer Percy came to UCF on Tuesday for a book reading. She wrote the novel Demon Camp, A Soldier's Exorcism. Her book focuses on true stories of Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans. She also tells the story of Caleb Daniels, an American soldier dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. Here in Orlando, UCF offers an outlet for veterans through the UCF Restores Clinic. The clinic helps veterans cope with PTSD through exposure therapy treatments. Dr. Sean Carter says this disorder can affect many day-to-day -day activities in a veteran's life. It has a severe impact on their life. They can't go to school. They can't work um, because of their PTSD. And then by coming here and going through our program, we could see a dramatic turnaround. Dr. Carter says he's proud to work with the only comprehensive program in the country, which includes group and individual therapy for Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. Central Florida drivers received an unpleasant surprise Tuesday morning. Gas prices went up 15 cents Monday night at some of the UCF area gas stations. The jump comes at the end of a historic four-month streak of declining gas prices in the U.S. Overall in Orlando, the average price fell one cent. And now it's time to take a look at our weather. Allison has our forecast. Thanks, guys. So right here, if we look at our state temperature map, right here in Orlando, it's about 64 degrees. And if, as a, we go down south to Miami, it's 70 degrees. And back up north, it cools a bit to 56 and 62 in our capital of Tallahassee. Now let's take a look at our heat index map. It is the first week of February, but spring fever is in the air for some parts of the nation. As you can see, the warmer colors coming up to the north of the country. And now let's take a look at our precipitation map. It looks pretty clear across the nation, no nothing too much to worry about. But if you look at the, um, the upper corner of the country, we have a little bit of weather issues up there, but they've been experiencing a drought, so nothing to worry about. And back down south to Florida, we have the storm coming off the coast, but back into the Atlantic. So let's take a look at our five-day forecast. So it looks like we're going to have a beautiful weekend ahead, nice and warm. But on Monday, we do have a 30% chance of rain that will cool down a bit, but nothing too much to worry about. Now back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Allison. Still ahead on Nightly News, we have your weekly UCF Sports Recap. And we'll give you the scoop on National Signing Day. Stay with us.
Hello Knights fans, I'm Melissa Murray and here's your weekly look at sports. Future college athletes made things official this week. National Signing Day seals the deal for fall athletes, committing them to their university of choice. The UCF football team will welcome 17 new players next season. Head coach George O'Leary said recruits are attracted to what UCF has to offer. Championships and and we've done an outstanding job academically with the classes ranked in the country. So I think that's what people look at. And that's your look at sports for this week. And our second show, Nightly News reporter Bree McNaught will give a preview of the upcoming seasons for the baseball and softball teams. Thanks for watching Nightly News. Stay with us for our second show.